Jose Vinales, financial counselor of the IMF. It's a crucial period for the U.S. as it begins the normalization of monetary policy, both with tapering large-scale asset purchases and uh, eventual, perhaps, interest rate increases. What implications does that have for the U.S.? Well, the first thing is that this is good news because the normalization of monetary policy reflects that the U.S. economy is doing better. But yes, this is going to be a challenging process because it's unprecedented in terms of its nature and scale, because the Fed uh, controls the policy tools but doesn't control market rates, and in particular long-term interest rates, which are critical, and because there may be a number of factors which may amplify the impact of long-term interest rates and lead to an overshooting of these rates for a prolonged period of time, and this may have some systemic consequences. So it is essential for the Fed to try to execute the exit in line with how the economy is doing, to communicate clearly in, in, and in dialogue with other countries, and at the same time for prudential policies to be very attentive in case there are some side effects on financial stability so that these effects can be contained. So as the U.S. goes through this process, what kind of an effect are you expecting on emerging markets and how can they prepare for that? Well, the main financial impact on emerging markets uh, is likely to be a tighter, more volatile external uh, financial environment. And this may also be reflected in, in capital outflows, which may be significant in a number of cases. So emerging markets will need to cope with this. At the same time, uh, emerging markets in the last few years have had very significant rates of growth of credit in many cases, significant increase in the corporate leverage, and these are financial vulnerabilities that may interact with this more demanding external, uh, external financial environment. So emerging markets need to prepare for this in terms of having better uh, economic fundamentals, uh, more policy space, and pay more attention to these financial vulnerabilities. So, turning to Europe, what does Europe need to do to return to financial stability? I think that Europe needs to finish the job that it has been uh, already started a few years ago of completing the process of repair of the financial system and in particularly of banks. And at the same time, move ahead at good speed in terms of putting in place a banking union. And the two processes are going to be closely interconnected. I think that Europe needs to deal with the remaining weak banks and the balance sheet assessment that the European authorities are going to carry out, including also a stress tests, are going to be critical in order to detect which banks need more capital and they should also have the capital backstops which are needed to provide this capital in a timely, in a timely manner when that is necessary. But at the same time, not only banks need to be made sounder in those cases where they're weak, Weak corporates need to be addressed. This is very important for the economy, and this is something that requires also specific attention. So you you mentioned the weak banks. What are the priorities now in global regulatory reform? Well, there has been a lot of work that has been done to advance the regulatory reform agenda, but there is still progress to be made in order to go to a sufficiently safe financial system. Uh, I think there are three priorities. The first one has to do with banks. Uh, Basel III uh, needs to be finalized. There are a number of things which are already completed there and they need to be implemented in an internationally consistent manner. Uh, it's also very important to deal with the uh, too big to fail problem or too important to fail problem regarding systemically important uh, financial institutions. Uh, it's critical to move to a safer, more transparent uh, derivative markets and deal with the issues in the shadow banking system so that uh, systemic risk is kept under control. Jose Vinales, thank you. You're welcome.